praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. Welcome again to our morning devotion prayer this Sunday morning. Amen. I just thank God for this day. For the Bible said, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in this day. Amen. We excited once again. Amen. To be with y'all. Amen. We excited to be alive, to be well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. As we open up in prayer, uh, as I begin to go through maybe a few scriptures, and then we'll go into prayer. Amen. Go into uh, a few scriptures and then we'll go into, into prayer. Amen. God is good and he is greatly to be praised. I said the Lord is good and he's greatly to be praised. Amen. Uh, Prayer ought to be the foundation for spiritually growth. Amen. To grow spiritually. I believe that prayer must be one of the major foundations that that will help us grow and be transformed. Amen. By the word of God. Amen. His word is a his word is 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 really what <clears throat> begins to transform our life by the, the the hearing or the studying of the word of God. Amen. Eternal God and Father, as we decree and declare, Father God, your word, the Bible says that your word has been settled in heaven forever. And Father God, I pray, O oh God, that that word will have entrance. Let your word, Father God, gain entrance in our hearts and our mind. Father God, I decree and declare, God, that even through the power of your word, that there'll be transformation in the mind, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Father God, that the people will know what's the hope of their calling and what is the richness of the inheritance that is in the saints of God. And Father God, I pray, God, that they will continue to grow and excel, excel in knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that they will know Glory be to God, that greater he that is in them than he that is in the world. And Father God, I just thank you once again for your grace and your mercy, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, I pray, O oh God, that your will will be done in us as it is in heaven. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah that the will of God must be done in our life as it is in heaven. Glory be to God. The Bible says in 1 John, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 and 15, it says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, and if we know that he hear us, we know that we have the petition that we desire from him. And I, I this morning, Amen. We'll be talking about what is prayer. What is prayer? Amen. And uh, how do we receive answers through prayer? How do we receive answers through prayer? Amen. Uh, the first thing I want you to know that the Bible says in Psalms 119 and verse 89. The Bible says that forever, Lord, thy word is settled in heaven forever. So that means that everything that we pray for, everything that God has promised us, is already been settled in heaven forever. Amen. It has already been done forever. It has been settled in heaven forever. Amen. And the this is why we need we need to know the keys we need to know the keys of the kingdom amen because our prayer must be in agreement with the promises that he promised us and also our prayer must be consist with the word of God his principle 
and also our prayer must be consist with the prophecy that he has prophesied over our life amen and so we we must pray in agreement with the promise the principle and prophecy now the the the, the, the promise have to do with what god has promised us through his word so that means that i i must have some level of knowledge concerning the word of god if i'm gonna pray amen based on his promise and his principle and his prophecy i must have some kinds of knowledge and understanding concerning his word because his word is supposed to be according to what he has i mean his his word unfold his promises and if i'm going to pray i gotta pray according to the promises that god has promised me amen and so your prayer must be based on the promises of god's word and any times we pray outside of the promises of god's word outside of what god says then you pray and you miss you you pray and you miss nothing happened because the bible says in jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 12 he says he watch over his word to perform it so god watch over his word words to perform it he watch over his word to perform it so he god god is god is subject to his own word amen god is subject to his own word and so this is why prayer must be based on the word of god amen prayer have nothing to do with you being emotional prayer of everything that you knowing and understanding having knowledge of what you decreeing because anything that we decree must be based in the word must be written in the bible because i must bring my request based on that what is written Amen. The Bible says again in, 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 in Philippians 4, he says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall guard your hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. So my, my request must be based on the, on, the, on the written word of God. I must pray in agreement with what God already has done in my life amen what then already has been manifested because the word of god has already been amen already been settled in heaven forever that means that god doesn't change his mind concerning his promises and whatever god promised us amen the bible says he's faithful he is faithful to bring those promises to pass remember the lord i i believe that one of the reasons why that many of us have not yet seen the manifestation of our prayer I mean we feel good in prayer I mean we pray we excited and pray and we really feel good but then it really don't brings no amen we don't see the the outcome of the prayer because most most of us pray based on our senses our feelings and so it, it it really it have nothing to do with our understanding of god's word prayer have everything to do with our understanding of god's word the bible says in ephesians i mean in, in hebrews 11 he says that and the third voice it says that and we understand that the world was framed by the word of god you see that and we understand that the world the planet the earth was framed by the word of god and so the word of god is what is the maker the framer of every level to every living thing that we can see on this earth the word of god and ready amen it's the maker and the framer that means it will be able to keep it together because whatever god started god is faithful amen to continue it god doesn't start something and never finish it i said so word, the, the word of god must become the foundation of our prayer it must become the foundation of of my prayer because my prayer must be based with what god has already decreed 
for my life. That's why the Bible says in in uh, in John fifteen seven it says that abide. Jesus abide in him, and his word abide in you, and you will ask whatever we will, and it shall be done unto us. So the abiding, so that means that he's saying that if I abide in him and his word abide in me, I will ask whatever I will, and it shall be done unto me. Hallelujah. So my prayer, again, prayer is basically, prayer is, is, uh, is bringing your request before God or letting your request be made, be made known unto the Lord. You bring up your, your request before God based on the scriptures, based on what is written. Amen. My request must be based on what is written. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says that in Psalms 138 and verse 2. Amen. David says that God magnify his words above his name. God magnify his words above his name. Hallelujah. That means that God's word, God put his words above his name. Amen. And this this is why because his words is his will. And his will is is who he is amen the Bible says in John 1 1 say in the beginning was the word was the word and the word was with God and the word was God amen in the beginning the word amen the word which is God was in the beginning and so when I pray based on the word I'm bringing God into my situation because I'm praying God. The word of God is God. So when you pray based on God's word, you are literally praying, amen, you are bringing God into your situation, the creator, the maker, amen, the redeemer. You are bringing him into your situation by praying according to what he's, what is written. That's why, saints of God, we must have some kind of knowledge and understanding concerning the Word of God. Amen. We must learn to go beyond our death, our head knowledge into a spiritual understanding. Above our head knowledge into a spiritual understanding. This is what causes us, believers, become so religious and self-righteous. Because when we begin, when we are moved by our head knowledge and not no spiritual understanding. Because the minute you have spiritual understanding, you'll be humble. You'll be meek. Because you know that it, 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 this is the fruit of the Spirit that is working in you. Amen. And this is not you. This is God is working through you. Amen. To accomplish His will on this earth. As it is in heaven. Now, I believe that one of the one of us the one of the uh, assignment of the enemy is to is to have the church to be prayerless amen that say satan doesn't want the church to pray amen he wants us to be prayerless and so he'll fight against our prayer he'll fight against our prayer amen especially when we when we uh have understanding of the capability and power of prayer what prayer produce and and how prayer can change and bring transformation and also how prayer can deliver satan will continue to fight us in the area of our prayer because he doesn't want you to pray as a child of god because jesus says that in luke 18 the bible says and jesus spoken he spoke a parable unto this end that man ought to always pray and do not faint. You hear that? And so he, so, and the enemy knows that Jesus is telling the church that the church ought to pray and do not give up. So he fight, the enemy fight uh, your prayer life. He fight your prayer life because he doesn't want you to be submitted to prayer. He doesn't want you to be dedicated to prayer. Because what prayer does, when we pray based on God's will, what prayer does, prayer open up the eyes of understanding. Because when I begin to pray and understand the capability of and the power of prayer, amen, 
things that the things that God has done ready prepared for us before the foundation of the world now amen be able to can can manifest itself in my life amen because I'm praying based on what the Word of God says that's why Jesus says again amen in John 15 7 abide in me he means to stay in me stay in me abide in me and my words abide in you if you stay in me and my word stays in you you will ask whatever you will and it will be done unto you amen that's the part that's the key of prayer that's the key the key of prayer is abiding in the word of God and the word of God abiding in you and you will ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you but you gotta you gotta stay the word abide means the it means a place of residence Jesus says I want you amen I want my word becomes a place of residence where you a place where you live not just visit but you stay here you live in this place if you abide in me my words abide in you you will ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you that's the power of prayer amen is the abide abiding in the abiding place in God and once you abide in him then the Bible says that you will ask whatever you will and it shall be done unto you amen and so the enemy knows that once we pray with once we have this understanding of prayer we start getting results every time we pray we'll get results so he want he fight against our prayer life will make us tired don't want to pray make us frustrated because we, we've been praying and nothing and we we really didn't see no change because there's a right way of praying and there's a wrong way of praying jesus disciples in in luke 11 asked jesus he says they says teach us how to pray as john taught his disciple to pray you see so prayer must be taught amen taught on a spiritual and biblical level that means that that prayer must be taught based on the will of God and so if, I, if someone gonna teach me how to pray they must teach me the Word of God because the prayer must be based on God's Word amen so when I bring my petition Oh, let my petition be made known unto God. I'm standing on what is written. I'm not standing based on what I think is right, but I'm standing, amen, based on what I believe. Amen. It's God's will for my life. Amen. And, 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 and that's his word because his word is his will for your life. His word is his will for, for our life. We execute God's counsel by carrying out His word. We execute God's counsel by carrying out His words. In Job 22 and verse 28, the Bible says that if we decree a thing, it shall be done unto you. If you decree a thing. Now, again, whatever we decree, must come from the word of God because we must pray in agreement with his promise principle and prophecy so when I come before God I'm literally coming before God based on what God promised me and so I let my request be made known unto him amen I let my request be made known unto him and the Bible says, after we let our request be made known unto God and the peace of God, the peace of God that surpasses all that we could ever understand shall guard our hearts and mind through Christ Jesus. This is why this is why the enemy doesn't want the church to pray because the, the enemy knows that prayer is power. Prayer is when you pray in the word of God, you produce power. Yes. You produce dunamis, dynamite power, explosion power that comes from the Holy Ghost and the word of God. Hallelujah. When we begin to pray. The Bible declare, amen, 
that if I ask anything according to his will in first John 5 if I ask anything according to his will and if I know that he hear me I know that I have the petition that I desire from him so press literally asking according to his will his will is his word his will is his word so we must ask in agreement with the word of God you must ask according to God's word and not and not be not according to what we see or, or how we feel but we must ask in agreement of what has already been written amen because let me tell you something the Bible declared that God he that promised is faithful to perform it if God promised you it God is gonna I'm telling you if he promised you it he's gonna bring it to pass in your life I said if he promised you it he's gonna bring it to pass in your life and it doesn't matter it might it might seems like it taking long but just remember amen what really hindering it from coming to pass is the enemy that's see he's the hinderer he's the one that don't want you to believe that that God hear you even though you you might you might know what the scripture says in first Peter the third chapter and twelve verse it says the eyes of the Lord is upon the righteous and his ears is open unto their prayer amen but in, 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 in some cases when we don't get answer in our prayer is because of sin because of sin in our life that we have not yet confessed sin the Bible says in the book of in, in the book of Isaiah uh, 59 it says that the hands of God is not too short that he can save us neither his ears is heavy that he cannot hear us but our sin and our iniquity has caused him to turn his face away from us you see so sin in our life can really bring it bring a hindrance to our prayer because we we still have we have sin in our life that we have not yet dealt with when I say dealt with it you got to repent you got to get it out of your life amen whatever you cover will live to fight you the next day whatever you expose you'll be delivered from it once you expose it you bring it into into the light of God's word hallelujah amen and you get it out of your heart so when you come before the Lord you're not coming before God with no hidden agenda with no sin that are that is that are hindering amen is causing you not to to to, to line up to God's word or oh, it's causing you to miss the mark amen and so that's why we have to deal with the sin in our heart we have to deal with the sin we got to make sure that our heart is pure when before we come before the Lord the Bible says in Hebrews 4 verse, verse 16 let us therefore come boldly unto, un, unto the throne of grace amen and so to come boldly you know you are gonna make sure that you, you that you're in right standing with God that you are in right standing with God amen if you confess if you confess with your heart me with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Christ from the dead you shall be saved so let me tell you something once you confess that sin that is in your life amen God is able to forgive you and set you free so it will not affect your prayer life it will not bring hindrance to your prayer life the Bible says in in, 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 in 1 Corinthians 11, he says, Let every man search himself. Or rather, let any every man judge himself, that he'll have no need of one to judge him. So when you judge yourself in the light of the word of God, and you say, Father, whatever is in me, God, expose it 
and I'm going to get it out of me. Expose it, expose it, hallelujah, remove the covering so I can confess and get this sin out of my life because the sin will bring hindrance it will bring hindrance to your spiritual growth it will affect the way you pray i'm telling you sin will bring you down it will bring you down and it will take you out if you allow it to continue to to, to live in you amen and so this is why that amen that could be one of the reasons why our prayer is hindered because our life is not in the in right standing with the God that we are praying to and so we are praying to God in our life as we're not living the life that we should be living as a Christian so now it is, it is affecting my capability to really to have boldness and confidence because if you are sinning you are literally condemned because that's what Satan does. He bring condemnation. He'll make sure that you are you feel condemned and you so you're not gonna want to pray. That's why the the deal with that you repent. And when you repent, then the Bible says in Romans chapter eight and verse one and two is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life was in Christ Jesus as made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemned sin in the flesh. You see what I'm saying? That will give you justification now because now, amen, you are no longer sin conscious. You become God conscious. Hallelujah. Amen. I say you're no longer sin conscious because that's what transformation does. When you get that things uh, sin out of your life, then uh, you can begin to submit to the word of God and experience transformation. Because tra what transformation really does, it literally it transform your mind from one kingdom into another kingdom. And also, amen, it, it gives you this mind of Christ. You submit to the mindset of Christ Jesus, like Paul says in Philippians 2. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That mind only can be in us. It is through transformation that that mind that we can develop, amen, the thinking pattern of Christ Jesus because his mind is his word just remember his thoughts is his word amen and so if that mind be in you that means the word of God ought to ever be in you amen it ought to stay in you if you have the same mind that is in Christ Jesus that means you the word of God ought to be in you always not sometime always amen always not sometime amen and so we're gonna we're gonna pray this morning we can pray. We can ask the Lord to strengthen His people. And we can ask the Lord to continue to give us grace that we will continue to to excel into higher heights and deeper depths in the Lord. That we'll walk humble, Amen, and that we'll walk worthy according to the location of which He have called us into. Eternal God and Father, as we come before Your awesome presence. Oh God, for the Bible says that let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. And we come boldly before you, Father God, this morning, Father God, because we know, we know that you are the God that is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above all that we shall ask or think according to the power that work it in us. We pray, Father God, this morning, God, that you will strengthen your people, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will receive strength in the inner man, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, and that they will experience the transformation, Father God, in their mind by the renewing of their mind in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, Father God, that they 
will walk worthy according to the location of what you have called them into in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father God, that they will come to an understanding, Father God, hallelujah, that glory be the God that all your promises is that is in you are yea and amen in the mighty name of Jesus Christ that they will continue to hold fast to their confession without wavering in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that we will not cast away our confidence which have great recompense of reward in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray, Father God, that we will continue, hallelujah, to follow you, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we will abide in you and your word abide in us and that we will ask whatever we will and it shall be done unto us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare, Father God, this morning, Father God, that you will rise them up, Father God, those who are sick and afflicted, Father God, with all kinds of incurable diseases. I pray, God, that you will touch them, deliver them, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, my God, that you was wounded for our transgression, you was bruised for our iniquity, and the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and with your stripes we are healed. And I decree and declare that they be healed, set free, and delivered in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I ask this all in no other name but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I forever, God, give you thanks and give you praise in advance, O oh God, for the things, God, that you has done. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Y'all enjoy the rest of y'all day in the Lord. God love y'all and even, even so, uh, uh, amen. We love y'all, me and my wife, Evangelist Pratt, amen. And Pastor Pratt, we love y'all, we love y'all, we love y'all. Y'all continue to pray our strength in the Lord. God bless you, God bless you, and y'all have a blessed day in the Lord. Jesus love you.